hello, and welcome to Language Arts with Dr. B. My name is Dr. Brooke Burks, and I am Department Chair and Associate Professor of Curriculum Instruction and Technology at Auburn University, Montgomery. Um, I'm elated to share this lesson with you today. Um, I'm a former high school English teacher. I spent over a decade in the classroom, and so I'm eager to uh, share this lesson and this book that we're going to study today with you. So we're going to hop on into it. Now, before we get started, I do want to share some of what we're going to be studying today. So we're going to be looking at making inferences and drawing conclusions. And we'll also look at a few vocabulary terms. Now, before we start, I do want to share those vocabulary terms with you, but I want to first tell you a little bit about the book that we're going to be reading. So of course, we're gonna read just an excerpt from this book. We won't read the whole thing. We're going to look at Tawanda's Quest. Uh, it was written by yours truly. And this book is about a girl whose brother um, was, lost to a senseless act of gun violence. But the book is less about that, but more about Tawanda's quest to really find who she is in life and to really just express herself in a humorous way. So we're going to read an excerpt, just one chapter from this book, and I hope that you'll go on and read the rest of it on your own. Now, the book will be available to you on the Montgomery Public Schools website, so please go there and download it for free and enjoy it with your family or your friends, your cousins, or whomever you want to read it with, or by yourself. <laughs> okay, so that's what we're going to be uh, looking at today. So there are a few vocabulary terms that I want to point out. There are some other terms in the story that you might find uh, equally as interesting, but I have not defined them here for you. But here are some of the words that you'll come across in the story. Agitation, impromptu, meander, misconstrue, and then I have a little bonus phrase for you here, preconceived notion, All right? Do you know what any of these words mean already? Can you use it in a sentence? If not, I have a little cheat sheet for you here. So I won't read these to you, but if you um, are watching by YouTube, feel free to pause this and uh, look at these words. If you're watching this on television, if you have access to a record button and you can record uh, while you're watching, uh, please do so. And that way you can come back to this lesson later and review these vocabulary terms. All right, so we're going to get started with our study of one of the stories out of this book. Um, but I want you to think about something first. I want you to think about your relationship with your teachers. I know that this pandemic, this COVID-19 that's going on has really cut your school year with your teachers short and you're probably missing your teachers. I mean, I know I miss my students at AUM. Uh, we were having a great semester. We were having a great time and it got cut short. And so I miss my students and I hope they miss me. Uh, we were able to keep in touch virtually, uh, but it's not the same as being in the classroom. So I want you to think about the relationship that you have with your teachers. Um, who's your favorite teacher? What is it about your teacher that you enjoy? So just think about that for a minute. Who would you say is your favorite teacher and why? All right, so as you ponder that, we're going to go ahead and get started with the reading of this story. Miss Vantage, 1994. I really stopped caring about school when my brother Marcus died three years ago. All I wanted to do was write about him. 
I went from straight A's to straight D's, just doing enough to pass. That was until I met my sixth grade English teacher, Miss Vantage. Miss Vantage was the meanest teacher you ever wanted to meet. All of us kids hated her. I remember when Marcus was in her class. He used to plot out ways to get back at her for making him write essays on stupid stuff like the importance of breakfast. I figured Miss Vantage had better watch out because Marcus was known to pull a fast one on you in his day. One time he tricked Mr. McCorvey, the sixth grade science teacher, into believing that Marcus had thrown up all over the assistant principal, Miss Delasky, and that she told everyone to go home early. After a while, Marcus stopped complaining about Miss Vantage and started doing his homework. I guess Mama must have gotten known to him about his grades. Anyway, Miss Vantage would come in every day with her granny dress and pink sweater she kept hanging on the back of her chair for those chilly mornings and peek over the top of her glasses to see if we were cheating on a test or talking or any of the many things us kids do like sneaking our book bags and eat potato chips and Skittles. Every week, Miss Vantage had the same boring routine. Every Monday was a quiz on something she knew nobody was going to read over the weekend. Every Tuesday was a spelling test on words like misconstrue. I mean, the lady thought we were supposed to be geniuses. I would use some of her words sometimes just so she'd know that I was not dumb. So she pushes her horn-rimmed toe glasses back on her face and tells us one Wednesday about this big test we were going to take at the end of the year. I was glad she finally mentioned something was going to end. Seemed like she was the Energizer Bunny because she never stopped going. Now, don't get me wrong. When I want to do my work, I do my work. It's just that Miss Vantage couldn't figure out when that was. Like yesterday. She come giving us some notes on William Shakespeare like he's somebody we really need to know about. He ain't shaking nothing up over here on A Street so he can go on back to England or wherever it is he come from. Anyway, she comes talking about this big test. Tawanda, dear, you're going to fail my class if you don't start studying for this big test, she'd say. Like, I'm the only one not studying. Everybody else ain't studying either. My mama told me to just let stuff like that go. So I did. Miss Vanish ain't worth getting no butt whipping over. The doctor lady my mama used to make me visit right after Marcus died would tell me stuff about how to cope with anger. She said that I should take deep breaths in and deep breaths out. If you ask me, that just takes up too much time. I'd much rather prefer to beat you down and breathe later. But I knew I couldn't do that to Miss Vantage, because like I said, she ain't worth no whipping. So I'd go home and start my math just before my mama gets home, because that's my favorite subject. My little sister Shanice likes to make mama think she's doing her work and getting good grades. Of course, if you're in kindergarten, everybody makes S's. Big deal. T-Baby, you studying for that test Miss Vantage giving y'all at the end of the semester? Mama asks. Now, I'm wondering just how she knows about this big test. Yes, ma'am. Don't look like it to me. Look like you doing math. You doing okay in that class. I want to see you study for that big test Miss Vantage getting. I am so mad. Miss Vantage done called my mama on her job and told her about a test. Ain't that something? I always knew she didn't have a life, but you just don't stop my mama from welding pipes together with a blowtorch and tell her about her child ain't doing something in school. She even called Mama about Marcus one time. She said Marcus is just not performing as well as he can. He has so much potential. He wrote an essay that I just love. I always knew he had it in him. I just wish he'd continue on this path. Blah, blah, blah. She didn't know Marcus, and she doesn't know me. I'm sure she probably told Mama the same thing about me this time. I could just kill Miss Vanish sometime. Okay, so let's take a pause right here. What do you think about Miss Vantage so far? So you might be thinking, well, gosh, you know, Miss Vantage must be pretty cruel because number one, she makes them study on the weekend, <laughs> right? They have a quiz every Monday, a test every Tuesday. You know, every week is the same routine, um, which is not such a bad thing. Uh, but Miss Vantage also has called her mother on her job. Um, she, her mother already, Tawanda's mother already knows about the test. So these are all things that Tawanda just finds completely um, unacceptable. You know, you can't be calling my mother and telling her about a test. That, that's just not how things go here. <laughs> um, 
so Tawanda is really taken aback by that and she doesn't she does not appreciate that at all so how do you think this is going to turn out do you think Tawanda is going to study for the test do you think she's going to do well on it well let's see let's continue Anyway, this big test finally comes up on a Friday, our last day in her class. Praise God. She says all her usual stuff at the beginning of every test. Don't cheat. Don't look like you about to cheat. Don't avert your eyes. Don't help nobody else cheat. I'm ready for this because like I said, my mama made sure I was studying for this crazy lady's test. Then she goes to passing them out. When I get mine, it got a note on it from Miss Vampire herself. I figure she's trying to be funny because I sneak a peek at the girl next to me and hers don't have no note on it. When I open the note, it says, Tawanda Billups, I have thoroughly enjoyed having you in my class this semester. Although I know you could have easily earned an A in my class, you chose the easy route and did only what was necessary to pass. After our first encounter in class, you promised you would do at least half of what Marcus did in class. Well, I commend you. You did what you said you would do, and you got exactly what you wanted. I wonder what your brother Marcus would think about this. Would he be proud? Sincerely, Miss Annie T. Vantage. Okay, let's stop one more time. Now, what do you think about Miss Vantage's note on Tawanda's test? So do you think Tawanda is going to be mad at this, or is she going to be okay with it? Given what we already know about how Tawanda feels about Ms. Vantage, she's probably not going to be very happy about this note. Um, do you think Ms. Vantage should have written this note to her? Okay, you might say, no, Ms. Vantage doesn't have a right to do that. And, and I would tend to agree with you. Um, but perhaps there's something that Ms. Vantage knows about Tawanda that maybe we don't know. Um, we do know that Tawanda's mother and Miss Vantage have had numerous conversations in the past and in the present. So perhaps there's some relationship there where Miss Vantage felt comfortable enough to write this note to Tawanda. Um, she did definitely take a chance because, you know, Tawanda could take it, you know, in a good way or she could take it in a bad way. I don't know, let's see what she decides to do. I felt the red hot blood bubbling over in my veins. I wanted to get up and choke her right then. How dare she put Marcus in this? He's my brother. I'm the one he loved and protected. I'm the one who bought him his favorite shirt for Christmas one year and he bought me my favorite bracelet. I'm the one who he encouraged to do the best. She doesn't know him. I'm the one who stood as Harold's bullet went into my brother's heart. I was the one there holding him as he bled to death, screaming in pain while it took hours for the ambulance to get there. I was the one who comforted him during his last minutes, making sure he died in peace. I was only in the third grade, but I was a big girl and did what I could for my big brother. I was the one who heard his last words. I love you, T-Baby. Always remember that you are beautiful and that you can do whatever you want. Tears now stream down my face. The first time I've cried for Marcus since his funeral. All of my memories of Marcus came into my head at one moment. The time we burned down the big chicken in front of Aunt Cicely's chicken shack. The time we sneaked into the movies to see an R-rated film. The time we went to Panama City Beach with Daddy to go swimming in the big waves. I knew I had to get myself together. After all, I am Tawanda Billum and I do have a reputation to uphold. So I turned my test over and read the two questions on the paper. Number one, write three paragraphs about how your experience in this class this semester has benefited you. Or number two, do an oral report, impromptu, on how your experience in this class this semester has benefited you. All right, let's pause right there. So Tawanda has two options. She can either write three paragraphs about her experience or she can do an impromptu, which means spur of the moment without preparation. She can do an impromptu speech. 
So she hasn't had time to prepare this speech. And we know that she's a writer because she, she's a self-proclaimed writer, as she says. Um, so which one do you think that she's going to choose? Now, you have to also think about how she's feeling. Um, so we were wondering at the last pause how Tawanda might react to the note that she saw on her test. And we find out that Tawanda is pretty upset. She says her blood is bubbling over in her veins. So she's really hot and bothered about this. And she begins to cry. She said this is the first time that she's cried for Marcus since his funeral. Um, but I really don't think she's crying for Marcus. She might just really be that mad um, with her teacher that it brings her to tears. Um, what other things does Tawanda think about or encounter during this time where she's trying to decide if she's going to choose the number one option or the number two option? What else is going on through her mind? So if you'll remember, Tawanda recounts the day that Marcus died and she is thinking about the details of what happened on that day, which is also probably another reason that she's crying because she's reliving what happened three years ago. She's reliving that right in that moment. Um, so we find out exactly what happened to Marcus. Um, we find out, uh, you know, because we knew that he had been shot and killed, but we really weren't privy to the details. But to find out that Tawanda was right there with him at the time that he died, it's pretty shocking, especially since she was only in the third grade at the time. So there are probably really a lot of feelings that Tawanda is having um, that she's unable to really express or cope with at this time. And so perhaps Ms. Vantage was really trying to help her overcome that in some way. So back to our question at hand, which of the final exam options do you think Tawanda will select? Let's find out. Everybody knows I'm a natural born writer, but I glanced around the room and saw everybody taking option number one. I, of course, must dare to be different. So I took the number two option. I raised my hand to be noticed by the old sewer rat, and she told me to stand before the class and give my report. I had no idea of what to say. I was so mad at Miss Vantage, I couldn't even think straight. It felt like I had been standing there for two hours before I even opened my mouth. Then I thought of something Marcus once told me. Never look like you're afraid to do anything, because then people will think you're a wimp and take advantage of you. We're waiting, the old prune said. Well. I started. I came to this class with the preconceived notion that Ms. Vantage was an evil little woman who treated students like crap because she was trying to get back at a teacher who did her like that 65 years ago. In some ways, I can see the truth behind that notion. However, this class has helped me learn words like meander and agitation. For that, I am eternally grateful. I looked directly at Ms. Vantage, and even though I was saying such mean things about her, she looked at me with sadness in her eyes. I thought she would stop me right there and send me to the principal's office, but she didn't. I looked back at my classmates who looked shocked that I had called Miss Vantage evil. Suddenly, I didn't feel so good about the things I said. My palms started to sweat and I licked my lips. I looked back at Miss Vantage who gestured for me to continue. I looked down at my hands and said, my brother Marcus would be very proud of me because I am standing up for what I believe in. But he wouldn't be proud of the fact that I just skated by in your class. Even though he wasn't an AB student, he knew that I was. Since he died, I've really stopped caring until now. No, Marcus wouldn't be proud of that. As he was dying, he told me that I was beautiful and that I could do whatever I want to. I thought that meant I could cut up if I wanted to or fail if I wanted to. But now I know what he was saying. I can be whatever I wanted to be. If I do well in school and go to college, I can really be somebody besides the Tawanda who lives on A Street. So, Ms. Vantage, I apologize, not for keeping my word, 
but I apologize for just doing enough to get by. I couldn't believe those words had just come out of my mouth. Even Bebop McGee, the twin I beat up last year for talking about my brother when he knew Marcus has whooped his behind plenty of times before, was surprised. I guess I had learned something after all. Who would have ever thought? When I went to my seat, Ms. Vantage looked at me with tears in her eyes and said, Tawanda, we all miss Marcus. He was a wonderful student. Yes, he got into some trouble every now and then, but he was an excellent writer, just like you. You may not believe this, Tawanda, but Marcus wrote his best essay about you. He adored you and loved you to death. There's nothing that he wouldn't have done for you. I reached into my book bag, which had my whole life in it, and pulled out the little wooden jewelry box that Marcus had made in woodshop class one year. I have lots of Marcus's things. I walked up to Miss Vantage and gave her the box. Marcus made this for me, and I want you to have it. Why? she asked. I have everything of Marcus's, and I have memories that no one else does. I see now that you loved him too. So here's something for you to remember him by. Miss Vantage is my favorite teacher. All right. So we go from Miss Vantage being the meanest teacher you ever wanted to meet, and all of us kids hated her, to Miss Vantage is my favorite teacher. What do you think happened? Uh, between Miss Vantage being this mean teacher and now she's the favorite teacher. What do you think caused that shift for Tawanda? So some might say that it has something to do with the letter that's posted on the final exam. And that could very well be the case. Um, I think Tawanda, you know, sometimes when we uh, write things out or we say things out loud, it can be very cathartic. That's another vocabulary term. Uh, a catharsis is a, a, a revelation. It's like, oh, I've, I've come to this knowledge and I've, I feel good about this thing now because I've had time to really think it through. And by Tawanda doing this impromptu speech, she realized some things about herself that she really wasn't aware of before. She now sees Miss Vantage in a different light. She now sees, oh, Miss Vantage cared for my brother as much as I care for him. You know, she was his teacher, but she still loved him. And so she gives her the box that Marcus made for her in woodshop class. Now, would you have done the same thing? Would you have given um, something that was special to you, uh, to the teacher. And some of you might say, no, absolutely not. I wouldn't give her something that special. Um, and that's absolutely your right to do so. And I think it's, it just shows um, Tawanda's uh, maturity in that moment. Uh, we know that Tawanda is a very smart girl. She went from straight A's to straight D's, just doing enough to pass. So she knew that she could do more. She just didn't apply herself. She even said that she uses the words that Ms. Vantage has taught them um, just so Ms. Vantage would know that she's not dumb. So it, it was like, a, a you know, Tawanda is uh, just sitting back relaxing her way through school right now. Um, she knows that she can do more. She knows that she's smarter than that. Um, but she just didn't want to show it. She just, I, at the moment, I, I think she felt like she just didn't have a reason to. But um, once she thinks about the things that Marcus has told her, and she thinks about what, what Vantage has said, um, that gives her a different perspective. So what do you think Tawanda's relationship was like with her brother Marcus? Okay, so you might think that, uh, you know, they had a, a pretty decent relationship, and they did. They actually did. They had a great relationship, which is obvious in, you know, how she listens to his advice. She remembers the things that he said. Um, they had a lot of experiences together, and she re recalls those experiences. Um, they might not have been the best examples of, of things that big brothers should teach their little sisters, like how to sneak into R-rated movies. Um, 
but she finds them to be fond memories. She talks about the burning down of the chicken shack and the swimming in the waves with their father. Um, so there are many things that um, that they did together and uh, shows that they, you know, shows their relationship with each other. Um, of course, Marcus is older than Tawanda because he was in Miss Vantage's class before Tawanda got there. So he was older and, you know, big brothers and little sisters kind of have a special relationship in, in a lot of situations. Um, so Tawanda misses that, but uh, I think for her, just knowing that someone else has expressed their love for Marcus um, meant a lot to her. You know, if you've ever lost something that you love, whether it was a family member or a friend or a pet, um, you know, you want to talk about that individual or that thing or that um, that pet. Uh, you want to talk about them with others. And sometimes others might not really understand where you're coming from because either they, they didn't know your pet, they didn't know your family member, um, or they didn't have a relationship with them. And so it's not as important to them sometimes. Uh, but the fact that Tawanda and Miss Vantage could share this, this is something that they had in common, their love for Marcus, it actually, it, it, it helped Tawanda in a big way. So I challenge you now uh, to write a, a couple of paragraphs of what you think about Tawanda and her experience and how she made this transformation from hating Ms. Vantage to loving Ms. Vantage. Um, now, it's my personal belief that hate really isn't the opposite of love. So Tawanda hating Ms. Vantage was just love in disguise. Um, so how do you think Tawanda makes this transformation? What is your conception of this? And how, um, is there any way that you relate to this in, in any way? So I just challenge you to write a little bit about it. Keep it in a, a notebook, write a journal. And um, I would love to one day see what you think about it. But I know that we're in television land or YouTube land. And so that's uh, sort of hard to do. But I hope that you have enjoyed this lesson. Um, I hope to come back to you with some other lessons uh, a little later on. But I hope that you enjoyed this. And please go read the rest of the book and enjoy it. Have a great one.